I went to PAX East this weekend and it was awesome! There were cosplayers. There were beanbag chairs you could sleep on. There were food trucks with delicious chicken and rice. There was a place where you could watch your favorite streamers perform like monkeys in a zoo. But most importantly, there were loads of games. Here are some good ones. One of the first games that I played was Guacamole 2. Uh, oh, sorry, autocorrect, my bad. Guacamelee 2. It feels just as satisfying as the first one, and there was a section where you played as a giant chicken wreaking havoc on the bad guys. If you're a fan of the first one, then definitely give this one a shot. River Bond was a really cool co-op adventure where you played as a donut and you tried to hunt down pigs in a highly destructible environment. It was so fun just swinging your sword and chopping down trees and flowers and even pig fortresses. The game combines Link to the Past style swordplay with twin stick shooter mechanics which made for a diverse play experience. It's coming out sometime this year, definitely check this one out. Insane Robots drew me in with its catchy name and kept me there with its deep mechanics. It's sort of a deck building game where you place your attacks and defenses in slots on your robot and use them to deal damage to your opponents. Now, I only played the 1v1 multiplayer mode, but this game also has a randomly generated campaign, which seems like a lot of fun. I feel like with some more card variety, this game could get very deep strategically and should be a promising addition to my Steam library. Puss the game is... Really weird. The gameplay is simple and effective, you just drag your cat through a maze and try not to touch the walls, kinda like Operation, but the art style is unique and... I, I mean, just look at this shit, I can't explain it. There's a demo on Steam right now if you think you can comprehend whatever the f*** this is. So, at PAX, there are two ways to play games. One is that you could walk up to an indie booth, wait maybe 5 or 10 minutes, play the games, talk to the developers who are standing right there to tell you why their game is great. Or, you can do what my friend did and wait in line for two hours to play a single big name game. Which is fine, as long as the game is awesome. And it looks pretty awesome. Death Garden is made by the team who brought you Dead by Daylight, and it's an asymmetrical hunting action game where one player is a hunter and the other five are all runners trying to complete objectives and escape before the hunter kills them. The mechanics look solid, the atmosphere is thick with tension and despair as you are mercilessly hunted by a single far more powerful foe. I'd describe it as Evolve if Evolve had actual things to do. Okay. Those were the good games, but now it's time to move on to the big boys. These games were fun enough to have me coming back more than once during my time at PAX, and all of them are going to be instant buys for me as soon as I can get my hands on them. So here we go, the four games that I think we all should get and play and just have a great time with in my own personal opinion. At number four, I'm going to put The Take. It's a multiplayer VR game that you only need one headset to play. One player takes three minutes to hide an object in a room, and then the other player has three minutes to find it. It's so simple and yet insanely satisfying, looking through the room styled after old comic books with word bubbles that pop up every time you smash something and oh no, what's this? My opponent's placed a trap that completely blinds me for five seconds. The demo at PAX only had one room and three traps, but the full game is expected to have much more and I definitely will be picking this game up as soon as I get enough money to afford a VR headset. It's out now, anywhere you can get VR games, though. At number three, I'm gonna put Cluster Puck 99, a game that's on the Switch, and honestly, the Switch needs more games anyway, so that alone is bumping it up on my list. But it's basically a combination of hockey, soccer, and complete and total chaos. I played multiple full games with eight people in it, and everyone just had a big smile on their faces the whole time. The game runs well, feels good, and there's a lot of variety in the maps you can play, and most importantly, you can change your icon to be a butt on a little puck. I mean, how can you not be playing this game right now? It's out already, go support it on the Switch, bring seven of your closest friends and watch them turn into enemies. This game is just a lot of fun. At number two, it's gotta be Mother Gunship, a game that's just as awesome as its name implies. It's a shooter that feels a lot like the newest Doom, where smart movement is more important than taking cover to restore your health. The catch is that you can build your own gun, and the only rule is that your barrel has to be facing forward. With that in mind, 
anything is possible. I built a gun that was a grenade launcher with two machine guns attached to it. The possibilities are actually endless. The developers were telling me that you could block your entire screen with guns if you wanted to, and trust me, with some of the enemies you fight in this game, you might just have to. The graphics, the game feel, the sound design, and the customization help prop this game up, and I'm super excited for when this game eventually comes out. Tucked away at the indie mini booth on just a single screen was Hyperjam. This game was so much fun. It's a four player top down fighting game where randomly generated weapons sprinkle the battlefield and you can just blow up your friends with grenade launchers or slice them with katanas or smash them with a hammer. And in between rounds, players could pick from a pool of perks to better themselves for the rounds to come. I had to bring my friends over to play this game after I discovered it on my own, and we just had a blast. This game is very well polished, and they don't even have a release date yet, which gives me a lot of joy, wondering what else they're going to add before the game finally goes live. If there is one thing I can say about this game to convince you guys to buy it, is that I actually signed up for the mailing list. Guys, I signed up with my real email for a mailing list for the game. The game is just that good. I look forward to seeing developer Bitdragon release this game, and I'm looking forward to what projects they might have in the future. Go and put this game on your Steam wishlist right now, and thank me when it actually gets released. And that's it guys, that's uh, PAX, video games. Go go get them, go buy the games, and, uh, and play them. And, uh, and then leave a comment if you liked it. I don't know. Just go, go play games. Have fun. Enjoy. Bye. <laughs>